why doesn't Apple make a more affordable MacBook? And I know at first glance, that's very easy to respond. I get it. Because Apple just cares about money. They want to make more pro- Aha, uh -huh. okay. I get it. That's fun. We can leave all those complaints at the door. I want to dive more into the philosophy as to why maybe it's not worth it for Apple or what things they should take into consideration. And I'm genuinely torn on this, okay? I'm not titling this video with a question so that I can just, you know, answer it at the end. I legitimately want this conversation to happen because I think it's an important one. So please, let's begin. <laughs> So you know how Apple sells that low-end 10.2 inch iPad? I think that's a classic example of Apple saying, you know what, let's put some hardware together. None of it's really going to be very fancy. A non-laminated display Ooh, on an iPad, yeah, that's not great. An A10 chip, that's fine, I guess, but that's the same CPU in the iPhone 7, and they don't even sell that anymore. Not saying the A10 chip is bad or anything, but of all the CPUs Apple sells in the products these days, that's pretty much the most low-end one on any iOS slash iPadOS device. Just basic Apple Pencil support. The bezels aren't that fancy. It's standard Touch ID. The cameras don't really stand out. It's a standard 60 hertz display. Everything about it is meh, but a lot of people had a fairly positive reaction to it because the biggest feature of that 10.2 inch iPad is the price point. It goes on sale a lot, and most people end up picking them up for like 250 bucks, which for an iPad, that's a pretty good deal, considering it still runs iPad OS, and you still get the same user experience that people who spend $2,000 on the iPad Pro get, obviously, other than the limitations of the hardware, on the software side, it's all pretty much still there. So why can't Apple have something like that for the MacBook department? Personally, some people may disagree with me on this, I completely get it, but I personally don't really think the MacBooks are really that overpriced. I think they're just targeted to be premium laptops. Apple really goes all out with the build quality and the materials. They wanna make sure the speakers in MacBooks are amazing and they're incredibly thin, very light, and the displays are excellent and have very high quality. And not not that the MacBook Air is an example of a MacBook that is like really high performing. No, I think most of the time Apple would refer someone to the MacBook Air if they were just interested in a Mac OS device that they needed for simple things like writing documents and watching YouTube videos and just kind of doing very light work on it. We're not talking about heavy audio or video editing or that much coding. If you do those kind of heavier tasks, that's probably when they would refer you to, okay, maybe let's consider a MacBook Pro, but that's my issue right there because while people say well Apple likes to make higher-end laptops if you were acknowledging that there is an audience of people that may just want Mac OS for simple usage and they don't necessarily need a very powerful CPU or even a dedicated GPU they don't need any of those things they just need a MacBook for simple work stuff then why isn't there the 10.2 inch iPad equivalent of a MacBook where maybe we can compromise on a few things I mean I'd be kind of curious to see how affordable of a Mac Apple could make if they just just took back a little bit on what they usually prioritize in a MacBook that make them so high end. Okay, so like maybe the speakers don't need to be as good as they are, or heaven forbid, what if we went away from an aluminum design, right? Like a lot of people are afraid to do that, but I was honestly kind of a big fan of those old plastic white MacBooks back in the day. You know, they probably didn't hold up really well, but that material would probably be much easier to manufacture. Kind of the same white plasticky stuff that AirPods and their charge bricks are made out of. Maybe a Mac like that that you're not really too concerned with making thin, all right? It doesn't have to be the MacBook Air and this razor thin design. It can be a little bit thick. It can be the thickest MacBook for all I care. I mean, I'm pretty sure the 10.2 inch iPad is by no means one of the thinner iPads out there. There's much thinner iPads available, but that's not the point. Making a product that can provide Mac OS to those who need it in a more affordable package, I think would be somewhat interesting and probably sell really well. I mean, the 10.2 inch iPad, that category for the iPad lineup is the best selling out of all the iPads, and we all know why. A bunch of schools probably buy them for education, and obviously, lots of people with lower budgets are able to afford that. So, what's the big deal? What's the holdup? Well, another point that I'm sure some of you are already thinking to yourself is that Apple doesn't want too much iPad and MacBook overlap. Apple's been selling the iPad so long now on a tablet that can replace your laptop, which is why a lot of you are probably thinking to yourselves, well, if you just need a laptop for basic things like that, Apple's just gonna ask you to get an iPad iPad in the 
in the first place. Something like the iPad Air, which has a smart keyboard, which you can dock with it. And iPads technically even have mouse support now. So believe me, I get that argument. I get that point of why don't we just start moving people over to iPad OS if they don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a laptop. And while I think there's a fair amount of points there and there's some logic I could get behind, there's certain things that Mac OS just simply does better and there's certain things that iPad OS does better. I'm not saying one is inherently better than the other, but you know, different flavors, if you know what I mean. Like there's certain things I like about having a Mac and having desktop access to websites and having that native mouse support makes it a lot easier than accessing a lot of desktop sites on the iPad, even though I'm well aware with iPad OS, it pulls down the desktop site as well. But when your dominant interface is touch, a lot of those desktop features don't work too well. And of course, there's a lot of Mac apps that are designed much, much more differently than the iPad OS apps. Plus, of course, there's a ton of apps out there that are only available on the Mac and not the iPad. So just giving users that choice so that they don't have to decide, well, if I'm going to spend under a thousand dollars on a computer, I'm basically going to have to go with an iPad if I want to buy new from Apple. I think it's worth opening up that stage again. Maybe the ARM MacBook will make it really possible in the future. Perhaps that 12 inch, super thin, super light MacBook I talked about last year where Apple designs the CPU internally. Maybe instead of making an ultra thin, ultra light laptop, the first ARM MacBook could be the first affordable MacBook. That's not, you know, 900 plus dollars like the old MacBook Airs used to be, even with their thick aluminum bezels. Thank God those are gone now. Jeez. I would love to see what Apple could do with compromising in a machine to the point that you could probably get the price point, I don't know, around 600 bucks for a Mac that, okay, it doesn't need butterfly keys. Okay, it doesn't need very powerful CPUs. It doesn't even need necessarily a lot of storage. Just simple, affordable, and obtainable to more people Max. I'd be down to see that, but maybe it's just not possible. Maybe the hardware of a laptop is just too complicated and there's not really a good way to make a solid product in that price category, which is why at the same time, I can totally agree, maybe it's not even worth bothering. Maybe because iPads are so much easier to build, they don't need hinges, they don't need keyboards. You can sell keyboards separately, but the iPad can run without one and that probably saves on manufacturing as well. So this is why I wanted to bicker about it endlessly in today's video because I can't decide, I can't make up my mind, but uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is there a good way for Apple to make a MacBook that can cover daily needs, maybe just prioritize battery life with a Mac OS machine or if they compromise that much and try to make a product that cheap, is it not even worth bothering? And at that point, you should just get an iPad. Should we just instead wait for iPad OS to get more Mac OS features and more Mac OS support? I don't know. Feel free to hit me up over on Twitter, join our Discord. We can talk more about it there because I am so torn on this. And I'm usually not torn on things. Most of the time, I'm pretty decisive. I can just decide, yes, Google bad, Apple good. But with this, I, I, I don't know. What do you think? This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.